Hi, good evening. Welcome once again to the Gildari Freddy Kisum show. Uh, it's always a pleasure coming uh, to you and coming to you live. And I hope that uh, wherever you are, whatever it is that you're doing, keep yourself safe. That's all I'm begging you. That's all Freddy Kisum and myself begging you because, as you know, life is very short. You should not do anything, whether you're on the roadways, whether you're in a building working, to shorten that life. And you know, we do crazy things in this life. Tonight, uh, we have a very interesting guest. This show, since uh, we started last year, has gone to the extremes. I want to say to the extremes, we've taken politicians, we've taken trade unionists, um, we have discussed uh, 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 things to do with arts. We had uh, people dancing on this program here. So many things. Freddie Kisuna and I almost boss one another here. Um, but that is uh, the nature of this uh, entire show. Anything can happen, and it is to raise the levels of discussion in this country so we could be able to build a better country. When you have a modern country or you have a developing country, uh, there's a couple of things or indicators which uh, you could take it for granted, uh, things that people look forward to, that it's uh, uh, their indications that our country is moving in the right direction so you could improve and have a quality of life that you could say, yes, uh, we modern, we developed. Uh, one of the things uh, that we will look for uh, good roads good bridges um you might also want to be looking at what the police are doing uh, making sure that they do their work and make sure that people are complying that people they they're generally law-abiding citizens um i was driving along lamaha street yesterday and i happened to glance across at the railway that is parallel to lamaha street and i marveled because when you look at the trees and the lights and everything, uh, you see things that are beautiful. And these are things that are consistent with uh, what developed countries, green spaces, safe spaces. Um, today, I saw something that I sat up and smiled. And I realized that this country, regardless of the naysayers, it's on an upswing. It doesn't mean that our politicians are doing everything right. It doesn't mean that President Ali is doing everything right. And this is where we come in as, as you know, we, we put them on the right track. We say, hey, look at this. They can't know everything. And sometimes our people fail us. The NIS, National Insurance Scheme, plagued with so many problems. They went to New York. Uh, it's a promise by the president. And I thought that was something very good. You're finally fixing a problem that has been plaguing us for years. You can actually, you know, the, the things with old folks um, or senior citizens within this country, you got to be careful with the use of the old folks because we have senior citizens within the studio here. If you are uh, NIS um, pensioner, uh, you would, you're bound to every couple of months, maybe a year. Is it every six months with a life certificate, Freddie? Every six months? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. You yeah, have to hand in what you call a life certificate. There's a new rule or a new procedure now. You don't have to visit NIS anymore. You could sit down with your phone, you have WhatsApp, and you watch some column on video and says, here it is, Freddy Kisun is here. And they fill it out that you want. That is remarkable in itself. It's one of the many, I talk about indica indicators as to where we are as a country, how it's sticking by, buildings going up, roads going up. We have a new bridge across the Demerara River. I know I've gone on a little long, but also one of the indicators would ha definitely have to be the way we treat our surroundings, the way we treat our pets. Uh, if you take it for granted that we pelt every stray dog that is around the place, okay, you know, we got some crazy people here. I have a little dog. She's about nine. Um, she lost her husband a couple of years back, broke her heart because of two of them companions. Many Guyanese would have had grandchildren uh, or children from those dogs, little pups, and we give it away. I never sold them. Nice little dashongs. And I always felt very proud that, you know, that, that these, they, these little pups uh, would have made their way into homes that uh, the people loved them. And I saw them and I feel, felt very happy. But there are other sides to the story. Tonight in our studio, we have somebody who's going to tell us that other part that we don't talk a lot about. They can be talk a lot about politics. Uh, 
<laughs> but what about the little pets that we have around the place, Sam, um, and the dogs that we mistreat, and the cats, and so on? Man's the best friend. I want to say good night to my co-host, Freddy Kisun, and he's going to do the honors. He is a dog lover. He's an animal lover. And if you do anything wrong and he catches you doing it, that has to do with abuse. You're going to hear, you're not going to hear the end of it. Freddy Kisun, good night. Thank you, um, Gandhari. We set out in this program 16 months ago that we will add to Guyana's historiography, that there will be things said on this program that were not revealed before, and the revolu revelations have now passed into history. We have in the studio this evening someone who, a young man who has created, will be creating history in another a few weeks. Remember the saying um, by the famous, um, radio famous cricket commentator, when he shouted out, remember the name, remember the name? Well, we have a young veterinary surgeon in the studio tonight, and you'll remember his name because he will be writing his name in history in a few weeks. This young man will be opening up the first animal hospital in Guyana. Now imagine, and this has happened to me, this has happened to thousands of other persons in this country. Imagine on a holiday at 7 o'clock in the evening, your dog sprained his or her leg. Your cat uh, got um, a paw torn. That animal has to be in pain because you're not a vet. You don't know how to strap it. Throughout the night, until you get to the vet in the morning, it's terrible if the next morning is a holiday too. So it happens on Sunday and Monday is a holiday. That, those kinds of suffering, those kinds of traumas of over your pet will be over in the next few weeks. There is a swashbuckling animal hospital that will go up in Monrepo. Uh, so, when 10 years, 15 years from now, when there are other animal hospitals, remember the name, the man who gave Guyana the first animal hospital is sitting right next to us. And you have to admire that kind of contribution. Now, I think it's generally accepted that people pets are part of their family. I could tell you, my confession on this program this evening, I love my pets just as much as I love my animals. And it's a psychic thing over a period of living with them. You do not see them as animals anymore. It, 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 your psyche is underdeveloped uh, if you do not see social and scientific phenomena up close and personal when you live with a pet for years you do not come to see that pet as a, a pet as an animal you come to see that as an that pet as an integral part of your life and i could tell you my pets are an integral part of my family's life and so we have come to a wonderful encouraging phenomenal stage in the continuous development of this country, we are going to have in a few weeks time, possibly opening up in December, where they've always said, but because of contribution, an animal hospital. The days of watching your dog or your cat in pain the night because the vet, of course, is closed, those days will be over soon. Our veterinary surgeon will also talk about some things that are not good for the faint-hearted. At least when he told me some of these stories, I, I couldn't take it, of what scribs and fireworks do to animals. After that long introduction, one of Guyana's outstanding veterinary surgeons is, on our, is in our studio this evening, and you hear about his hospital, you hear about 
his experience of how people mistreat animals when it's the Wally, when it's only his night with the scribs. And Gildari and I will probe him, probe him seriously about police neglect when scripts are selling across the road to the police station. What could be more unconscionable than that? Just like Gildari had been too long-winded, our guest this evening is veterinary surgeon Nardio Basso Dio. Basso Dio. Um, his clinic is in Pashad Nagar, and I, I think from my own experience, it's a highly patronized clinic, and I'm, I'm not saying that in any lighthearted way. I went with my dog on Monday, and the place was packed. I returned on Wednesday, on Tuesday, and the place was packed. Um, ladies and gentlemen, and guys, wherever you are, Nardio Basu Dio, Dr. Nardio Basu Dio. Thanks a lot for being with you tonight. Tell us about the hospital now. Thank you. Thank you, Gildari. Uh, thank you, Freddie. It's an honor and a pleasure always to be in the company of wise men, people <laughs> who always uh, bring the challenges and the persons who are, are there, there to highlight some of the most uh, interesting stories that I've seen around for a long time. So I must congratulate these two young men for uh, having such a wonderful program, especially for our Guyanese uh, viewers and those abroad. So thank you for having me. And um, I, will, I will continue from where uh, Mr. Kisun left off, um, from the, the, the building of the animal hospital. I want to get a little bit why I chose to build an animal hospital in Guyana. A veterinarian, uh, to invest those amount of uh, resources and to manage an animal hospital, it's a huge task. It's something there that um, we must uh, admit. For those who have been to a hospital before, I can tell you how challenging it, it can get sometimes. But notwithstanding those challenges that we anticipate and those that we've seen before. Animals are now part of our family. Dogs, cats, some people have parrots. Rabbits. We have horses, rabbits. We have, uh, in, in many of the rural areas, you will see uh, uh, people having uh, things like cow, goat, sheep, not only f as farm animals, but they have them there as pets too. I can remember having uh, a pet sheep and my mm. pet horse so in that way where we are today from where we came from we cannot be here in the 21st century and accept that the stages and the kind of facilities that we had in 2000 is acceptable now we need to move on we need to get something better and if you move around georgetown you can find about more or more than three or four hospitals for humans. And you can find about four or five clinics for pets and various doctor clinics around town. But in the weekend, as Freddie said, let's say you have uh, Diwali is on Sunday mm -hmm. and Monday is going to be a holiday. So the clinics are closed. So if your dog or your cat has an injury, that animal has to wait with that injury until Tuesday. But that soon will change. Because if your animal has an accident at 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the night, let's say you come home after work, you're reversing your car in your yard, and your animals are so excited to see you. And then they get, you know, they got into an accident. So in that, in that area here where we anticipated to have a better facility to not only render assistance to our pets in that matter, but also to bring some comfort to the families in which they live. And we know, I, I could tell you some, uh, some of um, uh, the pet owners call me two o'clock in the morning and after, you know, I, I answer my phone and they're crying. And they said, Doc, I think Freddie was one of them who one night 
uh, you cry? called me. The fairy cry? <laughs> I can't remember. Okay, <laughs> I no, can't no. remember. <laughs> but um, he called me and said his dog had an injury on the jaw. Um, that's Princess, right? Yeah. And um, the very next day, um, Freddie, we were doing a spin with the campaign at the GSBCA. And I said, bring the dog in for me. I left what I was doing there and I, and I came up to see Princess. And when I saw Princess, Princess had multiple fracture in the jaw. Can you remember that, Freddie? Mm -hmm. Multiple fracture in the jaw. And um, I said, you know, Freddie was literally shaking. He, he loved his pet so much. He said, Doc, do whatever that has to be done. He doesn't care about the cost. And I looked at Freddie and I said to myself. You found this weak point. No. <laughs> I said, I am not the only one in this world who feels like that when my, when my pet is injured. I remember, I another, yeah, I remember the I that. We we had Max. Max yeah. was the husband of Mitzi. There's a dog that I have right now, and they're Dachshunds. Mm -hmm. And uh, that he got cancer, so he very quickly he deteriorated. And by the time we catch ourselves, uh, the vet told us that look, uh, we can't do very little, so we had to put him down. And uh, they came, mm -hmm. and I was at work. I was working at Kaiser News, and they put on the video, and I was looking at it, and you the, you're so weak. And then they put the injection. It was just within one, two, three, and mm -hmm. he was gone. And uh, the, the whole family, all the kids and everything broke down because, and me, I just turned it off. I didn't want to see it because you yeah. you're that connected. Yeah. But let me ask um, uh, from a vet perspective, how many, let's say one to 10, how many uh, homes in Guyana? Let's say 10 homes, uh, they, they have pets in it. Um. Uh, I would say, uh, and one in um, for every ten homes, we have like seven homes that are pets. All right, and uh, and then the alternative yeah. side, do we have a problem with strays in the end? Yes, we do. Um, Big problem. It's, it's evident. It's it's a problem that we have that it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. It is not getting better, because if you do look at what we tried to do, um, a couple of years ago with starting to do spay and neuter campaigns. Mm -hmm. um, it was done before, but it was done on a smaller scale. And we try to do it more frequent now. However, I think a lot of the stray population that, and the problems we have comes from poor parenthood. People are not spaying and neutering their pets so that when these animals uh, start to reproduce, they don't have enough space for them. They don't, remember, if you have a pet, that pet is part of your family. Just like every human being we have, we have to cater of uh, a few, or not a few, we have to put aside and we have to cater resources to cater for that pet, mm -hmm. be it financial, you know. And you, you could also have the world of money, but your pet, all that they need is your time and your love and your care. So when we have these kind of things happening, you find people have a dog and a, a two dogs, then they started to multiply. In another, they have four pups. Then in another six months, you have another four pups again. So that's four and four, eight and two, ten. Mm -hmm. So then their expenses started to go up. You have to have more uh, uh, resources to put into that. So what people tend to, to, to do is start to neglect them. So before the neglect comes, before you bring animals into the world and you have them, you have to neglect them and you have to, you know, be in a position of guilt. It is always better to spay and neuter your pets so that if I have two pets, I can take care of two of them. And then, you know, there is where I will, I will stand by them for the rest of their lives. We are talking about, you may blush when I say this, mm -hmm. but we're talking about a trailblazer. I mean, to imagine that there were so many top class veterinary surgeons. And it's until 2023, we're going to get an animal hospital. I mean, how do you feel? You, you, you have now with me your name in history. The first animal hospital was by a doctor called Nadio Basdio. I, I, you have to be given a, a national award for that. <laughs> the national award, we'll, we'll see about that. <laughs> but um, I must say that uh, an animal hospital, and for me to bring it for, for forward here today, um, we have one of the clinics in Guyana that has, um, you have used the services already where we do ultrasonography. Mm -hmm. We have- Ultrasound free? 
no okay. ultrasonography which okay. is ultrasound we okay. do um digital x-rays which is considered to be one of the top of the line x-rays in the country um we have a modern surgical theater and we have a complete pharmacy with a well staffed. i'm with, quite familiar with, with what you have yeah so <laughs> over the 10 years so i've been visiting you what we have needed there is to have a 24-hour services and also to have a special department where you deal where you deal with infectious diseases for example parvovirus and so on you don't want to have an animal with a highly infectious disease among healthy animals especially in a hospital setting so or in a clinic so you want to get them to treat them one side however if you have a pet and your pet has for example um a dehydration for example uh, your pet had had been there in the sun all day and they're dehydrated or they have a disease for example parvovirus that are going to dehydrate them we also need an area where we can admit them you say okay i'm leaving my pet here with you and um i i'm going to come back tomorrow i'm going to call you three or four times i would like to find out what is going on with my pet in that way the animal hospital will cater for all of that and also we will maintain the same laboratory services that we have to do um uh blood chemistry um, disease uh, 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 identification and so on but at the same time we're trying to take it even further to do PCR real-time PCR um, uh, some genetic testing also so that when you come with your pet you may not feel inferior to any one of the Caribbean countries and even to some of the the developed countries that we have among uh, pe people are coming in from all from all over the globe from all walks of life so we can't we can't say Freddie and, and Gildari, we're gonna walk the same path and uh that we did ten years ago, we're gonna walk the same path and expect ourselves to say, okay, we're gonna call our Ghana another Dubai in another couple couple of years. We cannot have um a development of our country and leave our animals behind. We can't. So that is with that concept there, that has how I um came up to say, look animals deserve no less than humans so we are going to make sure that every member of the family is taken care of um we're getting into very 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 heartbreaking uh part we know i know i've known you a long time i know how you come to when i was when i was visiting this doctor clinic gildari it was a modest looking place i've, I've seen him go and that is what is called true good. And those are the kind of people you have to admire. Gildari, when I took my pet 10 years ago, my pet, my cat, my dog, this man had a very modest, modest thing. And he worked and worked and worked. And now you should see uh, his clinic. And now we have the hospital. And I, I am so glad he is here on this program. So Guyanese could extend the Where's admission the hospital located in Monipo. Monipo. Yeah, the hospital is located in Monipo, right next to um, Mel Chafonis store. Uh -huh. That's that by the Walmart. Market Street. Yeah. Right. If you go, you see Lucky Dollar on that side of the yes. road, uh -huh. then it will be obliquely opposite. Oh, so it's right, so right uh, along the East Coast um, corridor, the, yeah. um, and mm -hmm. you're going to find um, the thing. It's the, the wall is the script thing. I know this. Yeah. The, 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 uh, we're going to spend another 10 minutes, you on the floor, to talk about this crib and this firework thing. These things are killing people's pets. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I, I wanted to ask you, you you have a clinic or a hospital, uh, whatever you would have over the years. A doctor would see some crazy, shocking, hurtful things uh, during their time. Something that would turn you inside out. Mm-hmm. Diwali, let's talk about Diwali and squibs. You yeah. would have seen some things which we could attribute to uh, that would uh, be panic the dogs or the cats and cause them to probably try to escape and hurt themselves in the process. Tell us a little about that. And then we could talk about why isn't uh, more people talking about the danger of um, these firecrackers on our animals? Why are we not saying stop it totally? But it got to be some kind of control. Yes. Because I have a dog. You, why would I want to inconvenience myself? Because you want to be happy. I have an issue with that. Yeah. One of the things here is that two-time uh, uh, 
we have this problem during Diwali and in the year and in the whole year celebration. Yeah. And I can tell you, I've seen, look, <laughs> I don't want some of the viewers just... No, talk about know, the dog, talk about it. Look, I've seen dogs come into our clinic with their entire bellies here gashed. Their eyes pumped out. There was one time at my clinic where the dog came in, where the someone stuck a squib into his anus. Wow. Yes. And that dog, we had to euthanize oh that dog. God, we had goodness. to euthanize that dog. We've seen dogs, oh we've seen dogs and cats trying to escape their homes, trying to, to climb the fence. You know, these brazen wire fences. Yeah, yeah. And they come down there, tore their body, torn their gut outside, their eyes damaged, their entire limbs cut off. And look, I challenge, I dare anyone, the, any night you have a lot of squibs, in any neighborhood, check on the road how many dead animals you will see get hit down on that road. Because they're the running, sound, they're running, yeah, yeah. some animals or a lot of animals here sound louder than us. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. Yeah. If you see anywhere that has fireworks, check the national parks the next morning and tell me how much dead birds you will find. Go in there and check it. Because my experience there in the national park running sometimes, when you go, for example, the earliest night when you have these fireworks, you go down there, you find quite a number of birds died, fell off. But it's heartbreaking yeah. when you see what it... If you go to the, the zoo, dogs. if you go in the zoo, you will find a lot of birds. Look at the cats. Look, I can tell you this. I've seen, you know, people say cats might be a little bit laid back. I've seen cats during this uh, uh, season of, you can, be, you know, anytime they have these uh, loud fireworks and so on around, you will find that the cats, they're disoriented. I used to pray that dog. Me see a notice, the police press release, was it about two, three days back? Mm -hmm. And things like this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I something just does not make sense. A man coming from Barbies, stop the car, the police stop the car, join one of the controls. Open the car, it has contraband in it. The contraband is fireworks. Or if you can stop the man from traveling with it. And the police are the head of Diamond there. And the headquarters is inside, passing up and down, up and down. And the people selling the fireworks right there. Does that make sense to you? Why you arrest a man with, with a car that's filled with fireworks? That does not make sense. So we could talk about it. This has been something every single year I hear about this complaint. We you and I are talking about it with Freddie here tonight. We're hearing about it all the time. And we as animal lovers, we, we understand because if you don't have a if you don't have a pet. You're not going to understand the suffering, and you see it firsthand. But the authorities. But that doesn't make sense. The authorities that can stop this sadism, this sadistic outrage. I can tell you how many people with power in this country have pets that they love. But Holland is going to get crazy so than that. As we get more money in this country with the oil and gas, people are going to start caring for the animal, looking after the gardens, looking yeah. after the house and whatever. But I, I think one of the things that with a vision of what the doctor is saying here now is that he would have seen down the line what is going to happen. Now, how are you going to have a developing country or a developed country that is inconsistent with the regulations which are supposed to be governing and protecting those animals. It just doesn't make sense. It has to go hand in hand as it develops. Yeah. And and look, as I always said, even to um these squibs, they are called pyrotechnic devices. And there's a law in Guyana that Against. says that says who are the persons that are authorized to have these uh devices, who are authorized to import them. For example, those people that, um, uh, those com companies that does quarrying, the Ghana Defense Force, the Ghana Police Force, these are some of the agencies that, that, that have the right to have these types of, type of explosives. However, these, these type of explosives are not supposed to be in the streets. However, but with all that being said, you still pass sometimes. And when you pass, if you pass, uh, uh, 
Maripo Market or Lusignan Market or Skellen Market, wherever you pass, there are a lot of persons, not one, not two, quite a few of them that are selling these devices. And no one can tell me that the lawmen are not around. You know, you have you have officers there controlling traffic. You have, you know, people there, you know, uh, 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 officers uh, directing traffic, controlling traffic, ensuring that, you know, you don't have, you know, certain type of, of behaviors in these markets. Look, the GSPCA is right there in the border market, right next to the border mm. market. And sometimes when um, the the staff go out and they take the photographs and they show you the size of the squibs and the amount of it. And everyone says that fireworks are the cause of it. But we have to also say, what type of firework is it? You know, in the world now, we have silent fireworks. We have silent ones, you know. It's it it may be a bit more expensive, but that's a good alternative. That's the one with the lights on. Yeah, you just, right. it, it doesn't right. affect it. <laughs> right. Then they have drones. You can you can even put you know Happy Easter, Happy Diwali, whatever it is. You can just put it up there, and those are beautiful displays of what we can have. But as I always said, there is no need for us to have more laws to govern these things. We have the law, you know, Freddie, and we have those laws. But what we need is the enforcement of those laws. These laws are not being enforced to so, so the way in which they're supposed to be enforced. The Wally is Sunday. Yeah. Then the holiday is Monday. And if you go to those markets, including border markets of the world, we're in um, Laluni and Irving, Queenstown, you go. Saturday, you're going to be seeing those, you see those things selling. They're going to be selling there. What an outrageous. Yeah country we live in and i am telling you there are people they are very very uh, senior uh power holders in this country in business in politics in the diplomatic community that have pets that they love yeah. why can't this thing be regulated but apply the law uh, uh, <laughs> just 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 apply the law <laughs> simple you know, growing up, um, everybody had a dog or a cat inside the home. Um, are you seeing a change of uh, people's um, attitude toward pets? And I'm not talking only dog and cats. They have pirates. They have so many other things. Somebody tell me they got a wild, what do you call this, wild pigs or something like that? Mm -hmm. The thing become the habit of the highway. Peccary. Yeah. Peccary is the wild pig. Um, I, I, I don't know, but it says this thing that they rescued it. Mm -hmm. And um, it wasn't doing so well. And then after the fed him, he decided to stick around. And now he's worse than a dog. When I say worse than a dog, he comes in the house swallowing himself and that kind of thing. And I said, I, I want to see that because it's it's good. But you have uh, you have it. But are you seeing um, a, a swift change towards our the way that we treat our pets? Yes. Look, people spending more money too. Yes. Look, we there was a time before the pandemic where I told the rescue groups, I said, we've lost a generation, but the next generation that we have coming up here, we cannot afford to allow them to go in certain directions in which we've seen some of the older folks being. So what we went and do, we went into the schools and we started to, to, to give animal welfare talks, you know, to teach our children to say, look, these animals deserve love. If you give them love, they'll give you love. Animals love you unconditionally. And I can tell you, at my clinic there, on a daily basis, we have about 40% of the persons coming into our clinic are young people. Young people. And I can tell you, about 15% of those young people that I'm talking about are below the age of 15 years old. Oh, nice. Right? They are below the age that. of 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And... and uh, let me just put this a little bit clearer. These are the persons who come into our clinic and they show a whole lot more emotions to their pet. And I can tell you what that, where that came from. A lot of young people know, um, uh, we, I can tell you this, when they have their little issues and they have their little breakdowns or those who are suffering from whatever little you know, 
point they have in their corner. Um, they turn to animals now for love, and I can I can show you that because animals are not. If you have a dog or a cat, they'll come to sit down quietly. They'll brush you. Look at princess. Mm. Princess would actually know that when um, you know if something is wrong. Your pet would know when you come home and you're tired. No matter where you go or what you just did and come back, how you smell, what if you don't have anything in your hand, when you come home, you would see a wagging tail or you see an animal come and bracing you and, you know, you, they will show you that amount of love. I think the sense that animals, um, pets sense even, I think that they, they even... They even know what you're thinking. Yeah. But how uh, is your um, hospital working along? There, there's a number of NGOs, I think, Pause for a Cause, yeah. Tears for Hope, and so on. Um, how, how we, and I know you just spoke about the, again, the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, is that it? Yes. Yes. Um, the one by board. In fact, I adopted a dog that we named Sheena, my brother, and she lived for about seven, eight years uh -huh. before she died. But um how is your hospital working along uh with these organizations to not only sensitize but you know a lot of folks don't understand what they need to do for their pets okay um way before now even before the animal hospital we went into the schools and as i said we did um uh, uh, wellness talks we from new amsterdam multilateral on the west coast a lot of schools in georgetown on the east coast we did those because within with our clinic and these NGOs, we do a lot of collaboration, especially for spay and neuter animal welfare. We just had a um, a pet fear from paws and claws. Uh, the boys, yeah. uh, the scouts. Yeah, the uh, scouts uh, grown. Then yeah. they had um, the monster Wolf mash Avenue, yeah. um, there with Rosewood Foundation. Then they had an adoption drive with Tales of Hope. Um, we were working. Ever so often, those from Pause for a Cause, uh, uh, the members, they would call and they would say, Doc, what do you have an advice for this? But we all work together in this arena of animal welfare because we have one common goal. It's to ensure that animal welfare gets better and better and better in Guyana. However, we need to also have uh, some more cooperation from some of the, from some of the, the agencies in, in in different ministries, for example, um, with this issue of the fireworks. That's the Ministry of Home Affairs. The Home Affairs, yes. yeah. We need to have a little bit more cooperation from the Guyana Police Force. Mm -hmm. Or not a little, little, little bit more, but we just need The problematic them. Guyana Police Force. The we police just need them to get them, but um, I think we got to start prioritizing. And this Man, only you could got people at police station. Um, but well, why is stopping a man with a contraband and, and you the people selling the thing? Um, <laughs> Does that I, make sense? I want to. I want you to speak on a, a piece of irony. I find it an irony, though you and Gildavi may not. Uh, Doc, there are places where Gildavi and you, Gildavi is young, you're younger. I am far older. But I can tell you in Guyana, there are places where 30 years ago, you park and you go in, to the store or what have you. Today in Guyana, 20 you can't find parking anyway. Yeah. The animal clinic, GSPCA, is wrong a, location. Uh, you can't listen. That's a that's a border. Th listen, next next to that place is about five million business places where cars are parked and blocking the street. So you have a pet and you have to find parking four blocks away. I am appealing to you to use your influence. I'm appealing to the government of Guyana now, because they, uh, I think, have to finance that, that building at Rob and Orange Walk. Move that building. That building symbolizes cruelty to animals because you can't have access to get to the place. Um, Doc. And Gildari, well, the doctor will know. Gildari, please visit that clinic as a long standing well, media person. I'm my taxi driver and you're going to drop me. Look, you, you're going to park there. You, you can't. Um, uh, listen, I'm asking you, um, Dr. Basudio, is there anything you could do? Because in this, in your 
line of work, you'll be meeting ministers, you'll be meeting. Could, could you advocate for that place to be moved in a country with 83,000 square miles and one of the most underpopulated country in the world? Could you move that place from Orange Walk and Rob Street? You see, you see, um, Freddie and um, Leonard, I'm going to tell you this here. Many times when we were doing Spain with the campaigns there at the GSBCA, like during the week, Monday to Saturday, or Monday to Friday, I have to come off of my vehicle sometime from Albert Street and walk down. Mm -hmm. Or I have to stop here and walk in. Because you don't have parking. And I'm aware that the GSPCA has been asking for land. If they had any luck about that, um, I'm not too sure. If they had any luck about um, uh, in, in, in getting a piece of land to move that shelter. Which ministry it comes on? Ministry of, um, it could be the Ministry of Housing, Which but you could also ask the president too. That Which there, that there is um, from, I, I think um, it was from agriculture. Can't, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm Yeah, not the agriculture too. could push it too, because I think yeah, they, again. Yeah, like, um, so well, the Ministry the of Agriculture could, um, Yeah, the GSPCA, um, they, they, you um, on the board. they have some, yeah, they have some, they, because they deal with animal health, so they come on agriculture too. It's not that very hard, man. We get to the But Doc, you're on the board and you're one of the most prominent veterinary surgeons. You'll be, you now going into this, us opening the first animal hospital. Can't you talk to the president, the minister? That place has to move. Yeah, they, they, they have been conversation there, but um, uh, as to see how far they've gone with those, with those um, negotiations or getting a piece of land to move the GSPC from there. Well, we can get a minister very shortly in the very near future, and we're going to raise this issue with him. <laughs> I want to bring you to another side, the dark side of um, uh, pets in the end. A lot of, um, well, not a lot of folks. There's a couple of people in the end who raise dogs, um, and uh, they also raise uh, what what do you call them? Those uh, fighting dogs. The, the fighting um, mm -hmm. um, fowls. That's a uh, crime. The, the cocks. Yeah, right. Uh, a the crime fighting, against right? humanity. Mm -hmm. um, so you have that in the dogs. Are you seeing a lot of um, visits to the vet to uh, treat injuries as a result of those? Yeah, Leonard, that's a very very good question, and um, I I must say that um, you you did your research. Uh, those animals that are ended up in fighting and those breeders that are breeding animals for, for fighting, especially the dog fight and the cock fight, they hardly go to veterinarians. Sometimes they never go to veterinarians. They so are, what happened to those animals? We have something called paravets or quacks out there. <laughs> so animals quack get, doctors. Get, okay, quack, quack pets. pets. Quack oh, pets. Quack yeah. pets, okay. Um, when these animals get injured, a lot of them don't survive because the persons that are treating them are not qualified. They are not knowledgeable about what they're, they're, they're doing. And I can tell you, many times uh, when you have illegalities going on, they would not go to someone who would tell them this is illegal. They would go to someone who would take their money. Would take their money uh -huh. right? But if something happened to those animals, can one illegal person can can one illegality report another? You can't have that. And then uh, uh, when we try when we try to fight these illegalities, like to get um, uh, 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 some agencies to help us to fight these um, to stop these these quacks from operating, it's an uphill battle. It's an uphill battle because. Um, it, it is something there that uh, uh, somebody just say, okay, we're going to help you, and they push your side. Uh, I want to reveal something to you. Please tell me if I'm incorrect. I understand it's, um, scholarships. Mm -hmm. uh, well, UG does not offer a degree in veterinary. I understand scholarship in veterinary medicine is almost off the books. Freddie, we have... We have real agricultural country, we think... Yeah. Um, you yeah. think? No, we have quite a, for a, for a period of time, um, uh, students did not go to study veterinary medicine. But right now we have a few coming back, probably next year and the other year. But 
and they stay they, they have to serve this right they have the and there are also quite a number of persons that are actually studying right now to give you a, on scholarships a, right, about. yeah but to give you a, a direct number I, I don't have that on hand but I can tell you we need more vets we need to have um, right now uh, for the animal hospital we have to look to um, other countries to have veterinarians to fill those those vacancies scholarships are being offered to Brazil Cuba in veterinary medicine yes we have persons studying in Brazil we have some persons studying in Russia we have some persons studying in Dominica we have some study in um, I think it is the European the EU countries so we have and I think we have one or two persons studying in the US but um, I to, to give you the exact number but I know that the government of Guyana did advertise some scholarships for the past three years and people have been getting them this show here what shocked you with some of the things that we asked Freddie Kisson would shock me many times with the way he, he asks questions and the way he expresses himself and that's all right i'm about to ask the vet something here which might not be palatable to some of you're you going guys. to be like Freddie Kisson yes, i'm going to be a Freddie Kisson here tonight do we have instances with um uh, doc of where is it prevalent um do we see instances where you have to put down an animal because of i don't know if this is the right term i'm using sexual abuse by humans animals um is it prevalent it isn't we've had cases but it's not widespread thing hmm. but um i've across cases or three cases three. Five, uh -huh. within the past five years however a lot of these cases of abuse especially sexual abuse towards animals is not being reported because sometimes when these animals uh when people report stuff for mm -hmm. example um to get to get certain action it's difficult it's difficult to get action sometimes so we have to sometimes i would say we because us in the animal welfare community it's sometimes difficult to get cooperation mm -hmm. we do get cooperation yes but um from some of the authorities but when you go to the people for example you have a dog there that, that was sexually abused and then um the persons come they report it when we go to do follow-up and started to get the case going then um someone say um no, 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 no. Man, no, no, no. <laughs> yes. right? you don't think we have reached the age <laughs> yeah you don't think we've reached the age in this world yeah well people should not see a animal a horse john you know vehicle i was about to raise that one. Go oh ahead my god man that's cool teacher. now i i have noticed over the past 20 years there's a decrease in bicycle ownership and i think that's because of the economy and as um as um, the specialists that were here keep telling us by 2027 Guyana is going to be a terrific recipient of huge oil income don't you as a society gets more economically uh, uh, uh rich should we do away no it's poor guys from Charleston, poor guys of the East Coast in Sapphire. But shouldn't they be given an incentive to buy a little wagon or something and do away with, with when you look at that thing on the road, Jedari, these these cars I think there's a debate to be had. Let me tell you why. The, uh, Doc could jump in here. Could you realistically operate a hard run? Um uh, whatever you want to call cart, it, cart, cart, cart. right? <clears throat> and do it in in a way which could take care of that animal. <laughs> it, 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 could could you do it without overloading? Could there be such a scenario in which there could be rules of engagement? Because some places, um, uh, uh, in some countries, there's no cars. Um, some islands and so on, because. The laws are that if you have a horse or whatever it is, they pull the cart. So there could be some rules of engagement where you can't overload it. Oh, There's God, you're acting it. the police to... No, 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 no. You're but, acting but the police I'm just saying, you, because if you're saying, it's either you get rid of it completely 
or you said there must be some rules of engagement there. Your thoughts? Yeah, one of the things that we need, and I've always said that we need an animal welfare commission because that commission, you, look, we can't put all of, the, all of these responsibilities on the police because I don't think that they, they can handle well, like everything they that they have right now, well, well. right? Because they have a lot on their plates. So what we need there is an animal welfare commission. We need to have a proper animal welfare law that caters for a commission, enforce, uh, establish the commission, enforce it. And then that commission will be able to tackle some of these things. For example, we have um, Right of the Child Commission, which they are tackling their issues. Um, mm -hmm. Ethnic Relations Commission. Mm -hmm. Well, we can have a commission there for, for because look, it's not only it's not only um, harsh drawn cats you're gonna see there. What about some of these um, trucks that are carrying animals to the slaughterhouse and it's pouring rain and it's hot sun. And they got about fifteen animals in there. Yeah, and they're packed in there. Yeah, they yeah, have we so still much use things. the abattoir in Water Street. I that place should have been I'm not that sure. place should have been demolished a I'm million sure. years ago. I'm not yeah. sure. We but, we don't have a new abattoir. No. But I, you've raised something there, right? And Freddie, sometime or the other, we might have to have a conversation about this. Do you know that one of the best ways to punish people is by hurting them in the pocket? And why do why do I say that? Is that a good thing for this country if you want people to comply? If you're speeding, put a $20,000 fine on them and see how fast they start complying. But this, you got to, of course, have um, uh, uh, honest police officers. But... Imagine you start putting fines in in whether it's a car ticket that you park wrong, you you double park, whatever it is, and make it so difficult. Don't give them a seven thousand dollar man's a tech door, give the police a five thousand dollars and say let's get on with it. But you start implementing fines and it's not only fines in, in for the way animals are being treated, but almost everything in New York, for example, and I could only say that because it's where I visit. If you make a mistake and you put the, the a bottle in the wrong garbage bag and things are supposed to go there and it's supposed to go there, you would get a citation for it. Yeah, you would. You'd have to pay a fine. If you um, cross a toll bridge and you don't pay that ticket, that ticket, the toll ticket there, that thing builds up, you get interest. And if you don't pay that, they seize a the car, suspend your insurance and do all kinds of things to you. Soon, that is the only way for you to start regulate a society which is, which is by its culture itself, donkey. law breaking. We just like to break the donkey laws. Donkey cars, mm. those poor donkeys. And when it's raining... Start putting fines on uh, them. Look, uh, another thing we can do also is um, they are, they are, they are regulations or they are laws governing um, those cards because those cards were established there in the, the, the days when um, a gasoline driven vehicle and 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 these uh, mechanical vehicles you have now are running so what we're gonna have to do for example make sure that the horses are they, they have a proper shoe that mm -hmm. they that they're carrying the load that they're supposed to carry the hours for example in the very hot sun they are not on the road they are um, they are pro properly fed because you don't want a horse that is coming to pull a car that is limping that is malnourished that is not vaccinated you understand so when you started to get these things for example if a man realized that he got to spend five thousand dollars from a horse to make five thousand dollars more but if you go and buy a canter yeah, yeah. and he invests five thousand dollars in the canter and you can make twenty thousand dollars more which one he would prefer you understand what i'm saying there and is that is what gilary is talking about too is that you have to have um you have to put the the money into you you have to show people the economics of it and to say look if you don't do x y and z you cannot take this horse to the road and it will cost you You have to comply they There's have a to license comply. for everything for example let me ask you something here your car got your car hit a horse cart on the road who is compensating you for your car the no insurance if a government vehicle hits you too, you're going to know yes. your choice again. So, so we need to have a system where they even pay an insurance. So that if there is an accident on the road, 
somebody can be compensated. But, but look, Doc, what are you saying? Right? Before you jump in, Freddie, and this, this yeah. thing here, when I hear some yeah. of these things, I start talking business right in the head. Me, me head is one ears or somebody is be talking to me. You show your head good? I don't know. But Freddie, do you know how much how much revenues is being lost? A few people are being made to pay maybe 80% of the, the, the revenues, taxes, income tax and property tax and whatever it is in this country, while the majority go into it. I'll just give you one example. Don't ask it for more. Truck drivers getting five thousand dollars per a load trip. of sand. Can you I know that right? Hold on. They're making three or four trips. They ain't nobody capping in the amount of trips they're making per day. This is why they got so much accidents. I just got one question to ask the people out there. You know how much taxes are paying? You know, most of them don't pay NIS. What's the relevance of that too? What's the What's relevance? We have a lot of leakages and we could spin off from oh, it. You but could, we have oh, see, we a lot of so leakages. You could take that money and help the animals. Of okay. course, you point, could go Freddy. Freddy, point because you got to think out of the box. Point yeah. Jeez. And if yeah. the box don't have a lock, have a, God a help key you, Freddy. To open, um, <laughs> God help you. Um, I want, Doc, I, I, I would like to give you, and I can speak on behalf of Gildari. When the hospital is officially open, we'd like to take some um, video clips. And when we have our calling program, we will show those video clips. So that will probably likely be in January. But I can assure you, I can assure you from all sincerity, when there's official opening, we will show some of the clips. This is going to be the first animal hospital in Guyana. And I think it's going to excite every Guyanese. We will be, we will show those clips when the hospital is officially open. We will, you will have the relevant minister cutting the ribbon, but I can assure you, we, we will show those clips. Our time is going and I, I want, before you, our time went out, I want to say you have my profound admiration in Thank opening you. Guyana's first animal. Thank you. Um, those animals now can rest in peace at 10 o'clock in the night. They go to the hospital, they're sedated, and their wounds can be treated. Yeah. Um, I, I would want you to make a closing statement. You have the opportunity to meet with President Finale. Can go ahead on that. And you want to make a case to him towards the improvement or protection of pets, animals, and the animal. What would you say to him? Look, um, I the I spoke to the president on on a few matters and um I could tell you when he had the cricket the cricket for char charity mm -hmm. he did give some of the money to um to the building of a shell shelter his son Zay did two or three lemonade sale I can I don't yes, remember I remember yes. that uh... yes and I and, and and I admired the first family for that and I'm gonna tell you that. I've been there around him with animals in the, in that air area, and um, he has a lot of love and admiration for animals and the people who work with them. And President Ali, I am gonna say this about him because I can, if I go and ask him for X, Y, or Z now, he may not give you a direct answer at this point in time, but he will tell you, we will we will work on it, but. If there is one thing that I would like to see for animal welfare is that we have a piece of land somewhere for the GSPCA to to move their shelter away from from where they are right now because of the accessibility issue that you have the congestion and also that the the GSPCA operation that they have there is very is only limited to the small space that they have so if they can have Bigger space, they can do bigger things. Gildari, one of the biggest economy in the world, one of the most successful economies in the world, is occupied by a nation. And the space they occupy is 326 square miles. Singapore, one of the most um, patronized islands mm -hmm. by the people of the world, which is our neighbor, is 166 square miles. I think some rivers in the Dem Esequibo is more than 166 square miles. Why does why a veterinary surgeon has to come here and ask a piece of land 
for the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals in a country of 83,000 square miles, in which when you leave, um, when you leave Vizlos and you keep driving, it's endless land. When you go up the East Bank, heading for the airport, it's endless land. When you're going up to Linden, when you go to Region 6, when you go... Well, that is a question for the night. Uh, we have <laughs> placed it. Uh, I think the, the good doctor would have um, raised that issue. And, and what is important is what I started out with, what we said at the beginning of this show, which is in every country that is develop, developing and developed, there are indicators which, uh, which would say that we are good people, we have good standards, and these are the things that we should live by. And Ghana is within a matter of weeks going to have the first ever animal hospital. And in the studio today would be the man who would have been putting it together behind it, worked very hard. And it is just one of the many things that's happening across this good land of ours. Let's keep an eye on the prize at the final destination. As by long, the race is not going to be over. We have many, many years to go. We have many generations to come. Uh, what we do here uh the uh, amount of um the scrutiny that we place and uh, what we say to our leaders it is going to be important for the years to come on behalf of myself and freddie and the good doc um i'm not going to try to pronounce his name i've stayed clear away from that <laughs> but if you want this hospital no, <laughs> yes if you want this hospital it's just right there in mondipo right uh, by belcher for the store can't miss it just go there and you're gonna be seeing it for several and it's good for the Could country. I ask the cameraman to just sh put up? Uh, remember the name. <laughs> remember the name. Remember the All name. All right, good folks. Thank you very much thank for joining us. Much. Unusual topic tonight, but uh, it is part of the process of uh, bringing sensitization to our people. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back with you on Friday. <laughs>